I know this isn't how we intended on doing BTC instructor training, but thank you, thank you, thank you for being flexible and joining me remotely for this instructor training workshop. So VTC stands for Village Total Conditioning, and it absolutely is a total body blast. I'm talking cardio, strength, power, the whole gamut. We've got seven blocks. Within those seven blocks, we have three progressions that we'll repeat twice. The progressions start with a stable strength exercise. Your heart rate is going to be relatively low, and we're focusing mainly on one major muscle group. Then we progress to compound movement. So that's multi-muscle, multi-joint. You will notice your heart rate comes up a bit as we progress to compound movement. Then we take it all the way up the mountain to the highest of highs with all-out dynamic strength. Sometimes it will be high impact. That's where you're going to be completely gassed, over 85% of heart rate max, but it only lasts 30 seconds to one minute. We'll repeat that block one more time, all three of those, then move on to the next block. Seven blocks total. By the end, you are completely wasted, but you feel exhilarated. You guys, get a glass of water nearby because I think you're going to need your water today for this one. The equipment I'm going to be using is a bench, a set of dumbbells, gliding discs, a band, and a set of matching kettlebells. If you don't have all of that at home, don't worry. We will have it at the gym, but at home, in place of the bench, maybe you have an ottoman to use instead. Dumbbells, if you don't have dumbbells, use jugs. If you don't have a resistance band, how about an old set of pantyhose or, or maybe tight skies? I know you don't have pantyhose hanging around, but ladies, you know you were never gonna use those pantyhose again. So that'll give you something nice to pull on and no worries if you rip or tear them because like I said, you ain't wearing those pantyhose ever again. Gliding discs, if you don't have gliding discs, a set of paper plates works just fine. And then kettlebells, again, if you don't have matching kettlebells, no sweat at all, use your dumbbells. Or if you don't have dumbbells, use your jugs and we're good to go. So we're gonna start with a dynamic warm-up, body weight only. We're gonna get our music going. We got Power Music's Vocal Pop Mix to get us rocking and rolling. So this master class will teach you everything that's in the workout. Then we're gonna break it down into the exercise library of options you could do for each block. Let's get warmed up. Toe tap, right and left, toe tap. Yeah. Just get your body warm and preparing you for the workout that follows. All right. In four, three, two, double tap. Ah, tap, 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 tap. Mm -hmm. Four more doubles. Four, uh-huh, three. Looking good, y'all. Let's add lateral movement with it. Here, here. You can even add arms to make it a pony. I like the pony. <laughs> okay, you don't have to. You can keep the arms down here. You can keep it more athletic. Four, three, two. Skater, skater. Here, seven, and six. Four more skaters. Three, and two. Lateral lunge, reach up. Tap, and up. Tap, uh-huh. Work in the frontal plane. Working side to side, most of us need to do more work. Frontal plane, side to side. Eight, seven, six. It should feel like the room is warming up. That's your core body temperature rising. That is a good thing. Jog it out. Here. Keep your heels all the way up to those buttocks. Put your feet on a nice stretch in the quad. Four, three, two, squat it down and up. It's a sumo squat, so toes turn two and ten. Out wide, knees track same direction as the toes. Two more like this. Let's add some calves, tapping down and lifting up on your tippy toes. Also engaging those posture muscles as you reach long overhead. Good. Four, three, how about we unlock the shoulders? Egyptians, looks like this. Reach, reach. One palm up, other palm down. The palm that you're leaning towards is the one that turns up. Other palm turns down. Four, three, two, take a deep breath. Exhale, let it go, do it again. Inhale. Exhale, one more, because it feels good. Hands to the thighs. Slowly lower down and round the back up. Four, three, 
three, two, give me scissors. We're gonna raise the heat a little bit, okay? You should be starting to feel much warmer. With those scissors, tap, tap, lunge. Scissors, scissors, lunge. Good. I want that body nice and warm before we move on to block one, push-ups. Three, and two. Jack those legs. Okay? Out, in, out, in. Can we work a little direction change? Yes or yes? Always yes. Okay, we're gonna turn 180 degrees. Ready? One front, one back. Jack, jack, jack. Four, three, and two. Floor tap, floor tap, down. Keep your back flat. It's not vertical, but it is flat. Floor, three, two, and box your shuffle. Here. How you doing? You feeling warm, feeling hot? Yeah, yeah, warm up. Bye-bye. Done with the warm-up. Push-up position, please. Push-up position. All right? Here. Stable strength exercise is just your standard push-up. Okay? Down and up. Inhale lower, exhale lift. So, you can do these on your toes or you can drop down to the knees. What is important is you're tightening your abs, tightening your glutes, maintaining control. Just stable strength right here. Your heart rate will not be lower than this for the next few minutes. About for the next three and a half more minutes, this is the lowest it'll be. Woo! Down and up. This is your stable strength. Just a push-up. Seven more. Six. Are you ready to progress to compound movement? It's going to be a little bit of an animal flow. Push up and do a lateral hop. Push up, lateral hop. Other side, lateral hop. Push up, hop both feet to the side, lateral. You can always do the push up on the knees, then hop it in. Great. Push up. In. We got four more. We got three more. We are the champions. Ah, you know it's coming. We're gonna take it to the highest of highs. Anaerobic. It looks like this. Lateral, plank, lateral, plank. Don't worry about the beat of the music. I want you rapid firing. Feet outside the hands, back. Outside the hands, back. Go! All out dynamic strength. For the first time today, you should go breathless. Three, two, one. Push up. All right, back to stable strength. You're wondering, where's my recovery? Friend, you will recover as you work. Back in stable strength. Down and up. We are the champions. I didn't say it was easy. It's VTC. It's tough. Our first block is our push-up block. Stable strength, compound movement, all-out dynamic strength, building from a push-up. Eight more. Give me four more. Feel in the chest, shoulders, and core. Add the lateral hop. So push up, lateral hop. Push up, lateral hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! When you're teaching this class, you don't have to do every move they do. I want you coaching. I want you watching form. Obviously, I can't see your form at home. So I'll demonstrate the form here as your instructor of the workshop. Four more. Four. Hop. Three. Are you getting a little bit 
anxious. If they get it, to go to the top of the mat. All out dynamic strength. Let's go there, baby. Side, back, side, back. And if you're somewhat limited with hip mobility, don't worry if you're not getting the feet all the way outside the hand. No problem. Do your best, all right? Again, you're not on the beat of the music. We're going all out, fastest tempo. You can maintain with control. Four, three, two, time. Block one, goodbye. Block two, that's either gonna be squats or step ups. I'm gonna take the bench out for the first time. Woo. My equipment today is going to be a bench and a band for block number two. Get your band. Stable strength exercise. One skinny end of the bench. Just going to squat and up. So I'm kind of blending a squat and a step up for your option here today. You don't want a super tough resistance band because we're going to be pulling the zipper all the way overhead. And you want to keep some tension in the tube. Okay? Then we'll go into a lateral down. Two more like this. All right, add on, pump down movement. So here, up, squat. Pull it all the way up, and then a lat pull down as you step to the side. Heart rate comes a little bit higher than when you were just doing squats, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a squat up the side, step up high, a lap pull down as you squat. You're like, well, what about the other side? Hey, don't forget, we do two rounds of every block. So second round will be on the other leg. We won't forget, we won't leave you unbalanced. We wouldn't do that to you. Four more like this. You get hungry for it. All that dynamic power. Oh yeah, baby. Two more like this. We're gonna go all the way across the top. Lose your band. So tap all the way across. Come on now. Let's get that heart rate skyrocketed. Go airborne. I want to be able to drive a truck and do that leap. Are you there? Gasping for air. That's where I want you here. In that all out dynamic strength. Stable strength. Good, that's it. So you notice your heart rate coming down from dynamic strength as we work, as we do the stable strength exercise. It's an active recovery. Right booty cheek, right glute strength, right quad strength. Give me four more. Yeah. Rock and roll, baby. Let's add compound movement. Capiche, zip it up, left pull down. Again, like this one. You should see a huge difference in your heart rate. If you're wearing a heart rate monitor, when you transition to compound movement from stable strength. I do hope you're monitoring your heart rate through this workout so that you will see a ladder. You're climbing that ladder with your heart rate in each block. Each time we go up, heart rate's somewhat low, medium, then all out through two rounds, seven blocks. What do y'all think? Is it 
tongue to unleash the beast, it is lose your band, tap, tap. Woo. Fly it, baby, fly it. Use your arms for leverage. Keep conditioning, keep training. 
Nibias, Nibias. If you're at home right now, I don't know what you're using as your bench. Please be careful. Don't go using a case of beer or a milk carton, something that could collapse on you. Y'all ready for compound movement? Baby born ready. And iron cross. Lunge back. Up to iron cross. I didn't say it was easy. Uh-uh. But nothing good ever is. Nothing worth it comes easy. Breach. But you know what? When this workout is over, you're going to feel exhilarated. You will have pushed your body to the highest of highs, and it feels amazing when it's done. I always say, it matters what you look like. We do this partly for physical vanity reasons. Yes, it matters what you look like. It matters more your health, your physical health. How healthy is that body, your bones, your heart, your lungs, your joints, your muscles. Work on Your health is important. But you know what's the most important of all? Emotional wellness. How do you feel? How do you feel? Find joy, y'all. Four more. Three. Ah, let's go. Two more compound movement. Then hit the high point with that dynamic strength. Step off. Lose the band. Take it overhead. You and me, let's do it. Plyometric lunges. Overhead plyo lunges. Good job, keep it up. Woo. I want you sinking in the lunge and really leaping up high. Beautiful. You are so much stronger than that little devil in your head wants you to think you are. Press on, people. Eight. Seven. Four. Done with your band for the day. Leave the bench. You don't have to. I will so you can see me. Dumbbells, halfway up, all the way down, curl. Working mid range. Heart rate comes down. As we work it. Three. That short range of motion. All the way up, halfway down. Stable strength is just your standard bicep curls. Four, flexion and, flexion and extension at the elbow. Two, full range. Let's go full range. Seven, six. Beautiful. Check it out. Tap down to a curl. Tap down. Curl. Tap down, curl it at the top. Nice, compound movement. We're saying hello, lower body, firing up the muscles below the belt while still toning the guns. All right, you gotta know that most of the challenge, most of the game is mental. You cross over those mental hurdles and you'll move mountains. Eight. Seven. Yeah. This class is all about metabolic training. All right? We train smart. We kind of stoke that fire. Then we completely throw gasoline on it. Uh-huh. That's what's coming up. You ready to throw some kerosene on that fire? Plank to bicep curl. Plank. Curl. Go all out. We're working on speed, but not at the sacrifice of form. So always work on precision and movement first. How are you doing? Give me four more. You're not having to be on your feet. You're on your own rhythm. Hold it up. Half 
to stay this straight. Uh huh. You need to walk it out. Go for it. And two. All the way up, halfway down. Hope that sweat feels as good on you as the swimming pool feels dripping off of me right now. Three. And two. Full range. If you're a heavy sweater, take that with pride. It means your body is efficient at cooling itself. It's a good thing. Four, no shame in that game. Three, two, touch down to a curl. Squat, curl it up. Woo, uh-huh. If it's too deep for you to touch all the way down to the floor, then don't go that low. Maybe just come halfway. All right? Woo, the only place that fitness comes before health is in the dictionary, okay? Keep the health of those bones, those joints, those muscles, those tendons, paramount. Eight. Seven. Mentally right now, you're not with me. Mentally, you're already thinking about going all out. You gotta prepare for it, folks. You will accomplish the things you have set your mind to. Focus your mind's eye on how you're gonna perform on all out dynamic strength, because baby, it is here. Let's go, plank to curl. Out to plank, in, up and curl. Y'all bring the heat, you got this. Born for this. Your body is a gift. It's made to move. It is a pleasure and a treat to get to move it this way. Not the break, not neutral, yes. Give me eight, give me seven more. Yeah, 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 it's four, all out. Kerosene on the fire, two more. back out. Block number six of seven. Triceps. Okay. So you may actually need to walk it out a little bit before going down to line. If you come to line on this bench and you feel lightheaded, dizzy, nauseous, or sick, friend, your heart rate was too high. Okay? So once you feel like you've Safely cut your breath, you can move on back. Lay back, dumbbells over shoulder height, and skull crushers. Bend only at the elbows. Stable at the shoulders. Ooh, yeah! What's cool about your triceps is you have three heads to those triceps muscles. So triceps, Give your arms mega definition. Beautifully toned triceps are a gorgeous thing. Let's do it. For whatever reason, people seem to be obsessed with biceps. Biceps are actually a smaller major muscle group than tries. There's only two heads to the biceps and three heads to the tries. Two more. If this is a little much on 
on your low back, but you want to add the legs, you can maybe angle them higher to the ceiling. And that'll ease it up on the low back. One more. Just one dumbbell. Okay. I want your dumbbell light. Light. So that we can start here. Pop it up. Pop it up. You don't have to sit your butt all the way down. You can come just halfway. Remember, all out dynamic strength only lasts 30 seconds to a minute in our BTC classes. So it's okay if this is super hard. Four, three, two, whoo. Set two. Lay back. Feels right over your shoulders. Here we go. Tricep slow pressure. Yeah. This is the second set of block number six. After this block is done, we have two sets of block number seven, and you're done. Block number seven is our core track. We're going to bust out those gliding discs for that one. Woo! Or paper plates if you're at home and you don't have gliding discs. Give me four more slow pressures. Stable, stable shoulders. Bring the knees in, one skull pressure, one tricep press. On the tricep press, your elbows sink in like slots in a toaster, right by the rib cage.
again. Lift one foot, single leg down the bottom, push. Okay, both feet down. Don't worry, we won't work the other side. Set two coming right at you. You can be on your knees or on your toes. Stable strength is a push plank. Down, down, up. Listen to that body. If you need to join me on your knees, then how come? Why are you still on your toes? How come? Listen to your body, safety first. Because if you come down to a modified level, you'll develop the muscles that need to be strengthened to eventually go military style. One tricep push up, one plank. And plank. In. Tricep push up. Get yourself some water. 
and then get to the next track, which is the tutorial of the video library. So exercises that you could choose to plug in each of those seven blocks so that you, friend, are ready to teach VTC in the very near future. Okay, so you've done the full master class and you see what the flow of VTC is like. Stable strength exercise, compound movement, all out dynamic strength through seven blocks. Now here's the thing, each block needs to last four minutes or less, otherwise you're not gonna get through two rounds of each block in a 60 minute class when you add in your introduction, your warm up, and then your stretch at the end. So super important that you're aware of time. So I suggest your stable strength exercise be a minute to a minute and a half your compound movement exercise, a minute to a minute, minute and a half, and your all out dynamic strength, a minute or less. And really depending on what exercise you choose for that, 30 minutes may gap, sorry, 30 seconds may gas them. For instance, if you were doing a leggy burpee here in block one, that's pretty tough for 30 seconds. Whereas if you were doing an inchworm into a vertical leap, maybe they could go a full minute with that. But let's check out what I'm talking about. With block one, your stable strength exercise in every VTC class needs to be push-ups. And I do recommend that you coach those push-ups with hands on the floor. Because if you have their hands on the bench, they're already at an incline, which makes it an easier push-up. And yeah, they can drop down to the knees, but we want to coach the push-up in this challenging military position. And then they can drop the knees if they need to, as opposed to already being at a little bit of an advantage with the hands up on an incline. So. We're going to go ahead and just get started right here. They would do a minute to a minute and a half of just stable strength push-ups, military style, on the knees or on the toes. That is always something you want to coach. Always give the modifications to drop down to the knees. But after a minute to a minute and a half of the stable strength exercise, it seamlessly transitions to the compound movement. So the compound movement might be a push-up with shoulder tap, shoulder tap, push-up, shoulder tap, shoulder tap. So you're adding a stability challenge. When you do that, you guys, I really want you coaching to try to minimize the shift in the hips. So many people, when you add things like renegade rows or shoulder taps, anything where they lose stability, they also start getting all willy nilly with the hips. So you wanna, obviously there's gonna be some movement, but you wanna try to minimize that hip shift. So if your option for compound movement was a push up with a shoulder tap, you want to coach them. Yeah, there's going to be moving, movement in your hips, but try to minimize the shift in the hips. You can always um, have a little more control over that if you take the legs a little wider when you're doing those shoulder taps. Another option would be a push-up with a kick through. Push up, take the leg, kick it through. Tap your hand to your opposite foot. Push up with kick through. I like this option because they've already done a minute to a minute and a half of push-ups. So anything that takes some time off of doing repetitive push-ups in the compound movement. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They will like that a lot. So push-up with a kick through. Another option would be a push-up to a side plank. So, ha. Huh? So you see, it's keeping the essence of the stable strength exercise and just building on top of it so that we're adding multi-muscle and multi-joint. Also, also should elicit a greater heart rate response when we go to compound movement, okay? Another option would be a push-up side to side with a tuck. So here, tuck it in and out. Push up to the side, tuck the legs in and out. That's definitely gonna get their heart rate up a little bit. Push up and in and out, okay? That brings us to all out dynamic strength. This is where you wanna gas them. They need to go anaerobic for the very first time here in their dynamic strength in block number one. So here's some options. A leggy burpee. That would be a push up, jump in, plyo lunge, plyo lunge, up. So that um, jump at the end neutralizes them. So it's a power lunge, power lunge, then the jump at the end to neutralize the legs. Push up, two plyo lunges, and up. I call that a leggy burpee. Another option would be an inchworm. So if you're not familiar, an inchworm is just gonna go from push-up position, walking the hands back. You would jump up, walk the hands back out to another push-up. So you actually could just do the inchworm with no jump as your compound movement. And then when you added dynamic strength, push-up, walk the hands in, lift. 
Boom, 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 back out. Push up. Boom, 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 back in. Lift, okay? What's important here is that they go anaerobic for the very first time right here, block number one during the dynamic strength portion. So a couple other options that I gave here in your notes are a push-up with a donkey kick. So a push-up with a donkey kick would look like this. A push-up, bring your knees in, hoist the hips up over the shoulders, and up, also called a hee-haw if you follow Todd Durkin. In, also you could do a push-up, in, tick, up, tick, top, back out, push up, in, tick, up, tick, up, okay? So there you go, block number one. Stable strength, always, 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 100% of the time, a push up. Compound movement, a build on top of a push up. So maybe a push up with a side plank, maybe push up side to side with a tuck, maybe an inchworm, then all out, dynamic strength. Maybe a push up, walk your hands in, jump up, inchworm it back out, push up, in, jump up, maybe that leggy burpee, maybe those TikTok side to side, maybe the push up with a hee haw. You're probably gonna have somebody in class that has shoulder issues and cannot do push ups. If not shoulder issues, maybe wrist issues. And so their option for their stable strength exercise will always be to do just a dumbbell chest press. This would be their stable strength exercise. And you could tell them if they wanna add on to that for compound movement to do a chest press into a full sit up, back down, chest press into full sit up. And then for their all out dynamic strength, they could lose the dumbbells, assuming they have no knee, hip or low back issues. They could go into a vertical leap roll back in vertical leap. So in case you have people with wrist or shoulder issues, there is their option that they can take the push-ups out of block one. Block number one, good to go. Okay, so block number two, we go to lower body and this can be squats or it can be step ups. The reason I'm giving you the either or here is one, so our classes don't get boring because it's always the same flow every time. And also because scientists have done studies where they hooked electrodes up to the gluteus maximus muscles to try to determine what of all traditional strength exercises recruits the most gluteus maximus. And they tested squats, they tested lunges, supine hip bridges, even kettlebell swings. And what reigned supreme as king was step ups. So just taking a foot on a platform or a bench, stepping up and repeating that over and over. That's not to say those other exercises that I listed don't recruit amazing glute max, they do. It's just they also get assistance from so many other places that what recruited primarily gluteus maximus the most, it was step ups. So that's why I give you the option here with block number two, either make it a base of squats or a base of step ups. Either one, mix it up. So I'm gonna first show you examples of exercises you could choose if you went with the squat route. So maybe get dumbbells, rack them here at your collarbones for front squat, straddle your bench, and turn your toes to two and 10. By turning your toes out to two o'clock and 10 o'clock, that's gonna have you doing a sumo squat, also known as a plie. Your knees will just track the same direction as your toes as you squat down and lift up. The reason I like to coach these as sumo squats is because a lot of people have a natural turnout at their hips that turning the toes straight forward is not natural or normal to them, but most of us can open up at the hips and do a really decent sumo style squat. So two o'clock and 10 o'clock with the toes, knees track same direction as the toes, and you would go your minute to a minute and a half here with front squats. Couple things you wanna coach here, because I know you're gonna see this with your people in class, I know it. Their backs are gonna be rounded like an angry cat. Okay, it's gonna look like a question mark. You may need to work with those kinesthetic learners by going to them and actually putting your arm on their back, holding your elbow and your hand here on their spine to try to help them maintain that alignment, that connection with your elbow and your hand. Obviously ask them permission, for permission to touch them because in the state of Texas, we have to assume they gotta give their permission before you go laying your hands on them. So that would be for kinesthetic learners. But you also want to give auditory cues because plenty of people will be able to fix it if you tell them 
You want to keep your spine saluted. So lift your head towards the ceiling. Bend through the knees and the hips, but keep your head high. Your back is almost completely vertical. It is flat as you do those repetitive squats. And then for visual learners, oh, that's an easy one. We've got tons of mirrors in the studio. So tell them, take a glimpse into the mirror. Is your back rounded as you squat? If so, fix that business, all right? So there's a couple cues for you as they're doing the front squats. You would think that we'd all be really good at squats since every time you use the bathroom, you have to squat down. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Plenty of people really need some work on their squats. So front squats may be your stable strength exercise, a minute to a minute and a half. Then maybe you add a squat with a press to go to compound movement. And you can believe that by adding that press with this, the heart rate will come up. So we don't always have to go to impact. Nowadays, I feel like a lot of instructors always jump right to adding high impact to get a heart rate response. You don't have to do that, man. Just by adding that weight overhead, the heart rate absolutely just shot up. So squat with a press. We want to save that really high impact movement for our dynamic strength where we gas them. So an option here, if you've been doing a squat and a press, maybe just loaded just squats. So here, 30 seconds to a minute of jump squats with weight in hand, whoo, they're gonna be taxed. Another option may be to do a dumbbell snatch. So take one dumbbell down, dumbbell snatch up, change to the other hand. Hips drive to take that dumbbell up. I'm gonna face you because I feel like I'm getting out of the frame. All it is is a deadlift, taking your hips back, then drive the weight up to the ceiling to a lockout at the elbow. And I know some of you are like, lock out! Why are you locking out the joint? Folks, your joints are made to lock. You are going to lock for like a nanosecond to secure the weight overhead before releasing and coming back down. It's a fire and flow. All right? I don't know where all this business got started that never ever lock at your joints. It's a nanosecond. Hold it, everything is contracted, and release. Fire and flow. So it'd be 30 seconds to a minute of that all out dynamic strength. Also, I showed you the jump squat with the weights. You could totally lose the weights and have them just take their hands down. They jump higher without the weights right here. Another option, in and out, in and out. I'm keeping this super simple for those of you new to teaching. I know some of you that are experienced with group fitness classes, you're going to be back here and have them coming on and off and out and in. You'll get real creative with it. All I'm concerned about is that during the dynamic strength phase, you gas them. They go anaerobic, over 85% of heart rate max. If they're not doing it, this class is not going to accomplish the metabolic conditioning that we have told them that they will get out of this. So be sure during that third phase, the dynamic strength phase, you go anaerobic. All right, so let's look at an option if you pick step ups as your base. So as your stable strength exercise, we'd say start with right leg planted, left knee comes up and taps down, either in a lunge or just tapping down. So the more challenging option is to come into a lunge back, but for your newbies, maybe just have them tap that foot down. All we need is to be sure that their weights are heavy enough, that, that right glute max is fired up as they come here, okay? So that would be maybe their stable strength exercise. Then they could step over for Bulgarian split squats here as their compound movement. In fact, you could make it even more compound movement by adding a front shoulder raise with it or adding a dumbbell curl, bicep curl with it, okay? So they would do their compound movement here, however you wanna uh, structure that. And then for all out dynamic strength, maybe a tap down, leap, ha. And don't worry since they're only working one side because you know we're gonna repeat and you can do the other leg on the second set, okay? So your second set, you would take your dumbbells, come on back, left foot would be planted, right knee comes up, ah, uh, yeah, okay? You would do that for your first full minute. It doesn't have to be a lunge back, it can just be a tap. Then step over, Bulgarian split squat, means your back foot is on the bench. You lunge down, maybe add the front shoulder raise, 
Maybe add a bicep curl. Maybe you do lateral raises. In fact, if you did this on the other lead and you did front shoulder raises, why not do lateral here? Why not? And then for your all out, tap with a little plyometric. Boom. 30 seconds to one minute and donezo. Block two in the can. Okay, block number three is our back track. I've got plenty of options here for you for back. I like using the resistance bands for back because your back are your pulling muscles. And since obviously in a group fitness class, you don't have a pull-up bar or a TRX to be able to pull your body weight, then a resistance band actually comes in handy. So you could start with a stable strength exercise, just slightly bending your knees, legs a little bit wider than hip width, and just doing a lat pull down. Now, lat pull downs are somewhat controversial because in the weight room, you've got these big fellas that stack a ton of weight on a weight stack, and then they take their lat pull down behind the neck. And the problem with that is when you're pulling a ton of load and you're touching behind the neck, you could risk shoulder impingement. You guys, I'm not that concerned about it in a group fitness class when they just have a little resistance tube. However, for consistency and coaching, I do recommend you also coach your group fitness classes when they're doing band lap pull downs to touch in front of their face as opposed to behind the head. So a minute to a minute and a half of just lap pull downs with their tube, then they could add a squat side to side for compound movement. Now you know that heart rate is going to come up because we're adding the lower body with the upper body here. So you can start breathing a little bit heavier. Heart rate's going to spike up. You could even, instead of the squat side to side, maybe make it a transverse lunge. So plenty of options here to do adding compound movement with your lat pull down. Then for all out dynamic strength, you could just keep a little bit of tension in the tube and do repeat squat jumps. Really working those posture muscles, engaging those muscles that support your thoracic spine, the mid back. You could also do plyo lunges. You could do it with your lat pull down. Oh yeah, in 30 seconds, they will be gassed with that dynamic strength option, okay? If instead of the band, you were to use your dumbbells for your back track, here's some options. You could take those dumbbells and do Stable strength in renegade rows. So remember how I coached earlier, the people tend to shift their hips here. Really make sure you're coaching to try to keep those hips from rotating. And if they need to, they can always drop the knees down as a modification. Then for compound movement, you could go from the renegade row up into side plank to the other side. You do want to be sure that they're using their medium dumbbells here, not their super duper heavy ones, so that we're being safe on the shoulders if they come up here to side plank. Then for all out dynamic strength, maybe they do a renegade row, renegade row into a pop squat and reach the arms overhead. Again, engaging those muscles that support your posture, the mid back, the, the thoracic spine uh, muscles. So arms reach long overhead, come back, and you would be working on both quality of movement and quantity. So you are going for speed here. Boom, get up, right back. Row, row, ha. Row, row, booyah. Okay, another option for back. So let's go back to the top. Let's use your bench here. If we were to do stable strength with reverse flies, all you would do is take light, medium to light dumbbells. You would start with bent over, reverse flies. So your back is flat. It is almost completely parallel to the ground. Start with a minute to a minute and a half of these reverse flies, okay? From there, maybe add on, coming to plank, row, row, up, reverse fly, row, row, and reverse fly. Try this on your own before you start structuring your class to be sure that you get the heart rate response that we need. When you add the compound movement, the heart rate must come up. Then for your all out dynamic strength, after you've done compound movement, row, row, reverse fly. Maybe you say sayonara to your dumbbells. Take your rib cage down to the bench. Reach the arms overhead in into a vertical leap or a box jump. I got this from Todd Durkin. Reach into that Superman, up, vertical leap, or in to a box jump. 
These also work with the BOSU ball. We can use the black side of a BOSU ball. You take your abdomen down, reach into Superman, come in, and then you, if you were using BOSU, you would grab the sides of the BOSU ball and lift it up overhead. So don't go jumping on the BOSU ball. We don't want anybody breaking their faces in our group fitness classes, okay? Here, with that Superman, I want you to be sure when they come down to the bench, it is their abdomen that touches down to the bench and not the girls. Ladies don't need to go smashing their girls on their bench. So abdomen comes down, Superman in, vertical leap or box jump. There's your all out dynamic strength. Sayonara block number three. Okay guys, moving on to block number four. Block four is either hip abduction, so taking the legs out to the side, working in the frontal plane, which let's face it, most of us need to be doing more work in the frontal plane, or you could pick lunges, okay? So you're either going to do stable strength, compound movement, dynamic strength with lunges or with hip abduction. So let me give you an option if we were to go the hip abduction route and you used a mini band. You would just take the mini band around the ankles and maybe your stable strength is just a step touch side to side. And when you're doing this, maybe you're giving them coaching on what they're really working here. Cause they may not know. I mean, after you've done it for a while, your ass is on fire. And so there's no question that you're working the big house, but they may not realize that there are different parts to the glute muscles. And what we're primarily working here is not the glute max that we worked in block number one. No, sorry, block number two. It's the glute medius and minimus, the side booty muscles that are really firing up here. So a minute to a minute and a half right here, step touch, and then maybe add a lateral walk with hip abduction. Step together, abduct, step together, abduct. You know, the arms aren't adding anything extra besides a little bit of choreography. You know, that's me. I love some choreography, but you could always ride the no fun bus and do it with no arms. Just step together, abduct, step together and abduct. Now things you should coach here, try to avoid flexing to the side with the torso as that leg abducts. That, I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is. We want to be stabilizing through the core, the leg abducts, but the torso stays upright. Okay, so maybe that's your compound movement. You could even step together, ha, step together, ha, for a little bit more impact. Then for your all out dynamic strength, star jumps. So a star jump just preps with the knees bent, the arms in, and then jumps out to a five point star here. And you really want to focus on both height and abduction, really getting those legs out wide on the star jump. So there you go. There's your hip abduction option for block number five. Okay. If you chose to go the lunge route. All right. Well, here's some options for lunge route. Take one of your light to medium dumbbells. Maybe you do a lunge to the front, a lunge to the front, alternating lunge forwards. Okay. And then maybe for your compound movement, so stable strength is your lunge forward. Compound movement, you add a lateral lunge with a wood chop. Other leg, lunge forward, then lateral lunge and wood chop. I hope you notice with the flow of all of these, we keep the same equipment for all three blocks so that it flows. There's no harsh transition from your stable strength into compound movement, from compound movement into dynamic strength. Okay, so this would be your compound movement. We added that lateral lunge and wood chop with your lunge forward, then all out dynamic strength, maybe a rainbow lunge. So that's gonna have you turn to the side, pivot to the other side. Notice you do wanna be sure you're coaching them to lift the heels so no twisted ankles. You can make it high impact here, here. Jumping side to side. 30 seconds to a minute, rainbow lunges. Then you go right back to lunge forwards, to your stable strength exercise. I want you to be aware of the method to all this. The reason we return to stable strength after all out dynamic power is so that they are recovering actively. We don't wanna give passive recoveries during this class, which means you'd finish that 30 seconds to one minute of rainbow lunges and then come here and say, whoo, Lord have mercy, gotta catch my breath. No, we don't have passive recoveries. So you finish the rainbow lunges, then they will recover as they do 
that stable strength exercise because the heart's come, heart rate's coming down during stable strength. Okay, so you stay there a minute to a minute and a half. Then you would add the compound movement. Minute to a minute and a half. Then all out dynamic strength. Here, 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 here. Minute to a minute and a half. There we go, two times through. Move on to the next block. However, still got more options for you here in this block. So, let's say we did no equipment at all. No equipment whatsoever. We're gonna go with the lunge option for when we do some work in the frontal plane, okay? Here would be options for that. Maybe you lateral lunge side to side as your stable strength exercise. And I do bring the arms forward because you have a lot of energy, which is the mass of your rear end reaching out and back. And so bringing the arms forward is helping to counterbalance you. So somewhat challenging, but comfortable. That is your stable strength exercise. Somewhat challenging, but you'd say you're in your comfort zone. Then to move on to compound movement, maybe I add a lateral lunge with a kick. So a kick to the side and then go into your lateral lunge. You could switch to the other side or just do this side round one because you know we're doing two rounds, okay? Then for all out dynamic strength, lateral lunge with a vertical leap in between. 30 seconds to one minute. Then you return here where you started. And I always want you to be sure when you have them touching down to the floor, you give the option to maybe just come knee height or don't touch at all, okay? Because some people have low, back option, have low back issues that touching down to the ground is no bueno for their lower back, okay? So this is what I demonstrated in round one with the arms just coming out to counterbalance. Totally works. If you wanted to show them an intensification, be touching down. They don't have to. They can touch the knee height or just don't make that option altogether. Stable strength here. Then moving on. So we'll say we only worked the one side last, last round. You would work the other leg. Side kick into a lunge. Compound movement. This should not take them anaerobic. So it gets their heart rate much higher, but it doesn't go completely breathless. You wait until here. Dynamic strength to completely gas them. 30 seconds to one minute, and we'd be ready to move on. So there you go, lunge track or hip abduction track. All right, y'all, block number five, your biceps block. So you'll have your stable strength, compound movement, all out dynamic strength, and for your very first exercise, it's almost always just going to be a standard bicep curl. Why? Because the primary function of your biceps muscles is flexion at the elbow, which makes this a very obvious pick for your stable st strength exercise. It is what the biceps do. Now you could get creative and do standard bicep curls or maybe hammer curls where you turn the dumbbells vertical, maybe take them out to the sides for your bicep curls. You could work on tempo. So maybe up quick, down super slow, doing that negative tempo. You could work on range. So perhaps for the stable strength exercise, you do eight coming halfway up all the way down, eight going all the way up and halfway down and then eight going full range, okay? But any which way you cut it, just a standard bicep curl is probably gonna be your stable strength exercise. Then for compound movement, perhaps you go halfway curl up, reach out, in, and down. So adding that punch forward, out, in, and down. Maybe you come halfway up, lunge back, in, and down. Here, lunge back, in, and down. And if you did add that lunge, as your compound movement, it would only make sense then for all out dynamic strength to be holding your dumbbells isometric. So holding that isometric bicep curl, plyometric lunges here. That is really, 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 really tough, especially because on the landing, that eccentric load really grabs you. So gravity's trying to push this down and you're trying to hold it up with the strength of your biceps. So you're gonna really feel the biceps muscles firing up every single time you land because of the eccentric load. Whew, okay, but you know, once they finish, they don't actively recover. They pass, sorry, they don't passively recover. They actively recover, which means they recover while moving, you would go right back to stable strength. So with this particular block, you may wanna go on the low end of the time range. So you know how I've always said, a minute to a minute and a half, stable strength. 
a minute to a minute half pump down movement, 30 seconds to a minute, all out dynamic. Well, with this one, because biceps are a relatively small major muscle group, you may just wanna do a minute of whatever that stable strength exercise was, maybe standard bicep curls, and then maybe just a minute of the halfway up, lunge back, in and down, okay? And the reason for that is the biceps are now almost completely toasted, that at least you still got something left to get then your 30 seconds of plyometric lunges with adding the, holding, uh, the isometric hold, and then you're still able to do the second set. Because I worry if you go the entire time, a minute and a half stable strength, minute and a half compound, minute and a half all out dynamic power, they have no biceps left to get through that second set. So be aware of that. Be aware of that with uh, this particular block. Another options. Okay, so you've already done your standard bicep curls, let's say was your stable strength exercise. Well then for compound movement, we could add a bent over row, a bent over biceps row, which means palms face forward, as you come into your row. So standard bicep curl, tip at the hips into a deadlift, do one bicep row. The only problem I have here, even though it is compound movement, is that it would not get the heart rate response that we need. Your heart rate's not gonna come up much more than doing standard bicep curls. So what I would recommend to you, if you pick that row option, maybe do the bicep curl, tip into a single leg Romanian deadlift, and do the row there, the biceps row. So curl, tip into single leg Romanian deadlift and row. So that they are getting a little bit more heart rate response than they would if you were just doing the row alone. And they're working on their balance, which let's face it, we all probably need some improvement there. You're working your hamstrings, working your glutes, and you're working your back and buys. Boom, core two, all that goodness. So here to here, that sets you up for maybe a sumo squat, curl, press up for dynamic strength. And again, how are they getting the heart rate up to that anaerobic level? Because of rhythm, the load and the rhythm, tap down without adding any kind of plyometric. Because we have plenty of plyos in this class. We don't want to always, always default to having to go high impact for the all out dynamic strength because you can get that heart rate response other ways like this, okay? So that is your curl into an overhead press. There you go. Another option would be maybe a tricep push-up into an overhead press. So let's show you with the dumbbells. You would just go tricep push-up down, in, curl, press, and you could even do it without the press. I just find the heart rate comes up a lot more when we add the press in. So there you go. Okay, let's do one more option for your biceps track. The reason I'm kind of exhausting all of this is because we can get really narrow-minded when it comes to single joint exercises and you think you're really limited so i want to expand that that knowledge so you know you are not limited just because it's single joint doesn't mean there aren't tons of possibilities for so for stable strength yes we do want to default to your standard bicep curls but you could do it balancing on one leg and you know since we're doing two sets of all of this pick a leg that you're going to do first set of the stable strength exercise and pick the other leg the second set Okay, so there's your option, is your stable strength exercise. Then maybe for compound, hold an isometric bicep curl with one arm, and the other perhaps does lateral shoulder raises. Yeah, so then you are getting a little bit more heart rate response. Could you get even more so if you added a lateral lunge with it? Oh yeah, baby, lateral lunge with it. While holding the opposite arm, still isometric. And then you know for the second set, you could go the other way, okay? I'm not gonna do that here, because we were gonna imagine that was the first set. And then for all out dynamic strength, why not do a tricep push up into curl with or without a press. So if you're just popping down and curling up, the simple switch of going from down to the ground up to standing is gonna get their heart rate where we need it to be without adding that overhead press with it. Promise, promise. So then you'd be on the second set, stand on the other leg, stable straight. And then for compound movement, be sure you know which side you've already worked. Then we'd hold isometric with the other side. Maybe do a lateral lunge with a lateral shoulder raise. Boom, frontal plane work, baby. Then for all out dynamic strength, we'd add some triceps in. Curl. What I also like about this is it's a good segue into block number six, which is your tricep track. So if you did this for your all out dynamic strength for biceps, then you would just hold them here, say, whoa, whoa, stay where you're at. Tricep push-ups, 
There's our stable strength exercise for block number six. Boom. Love it. Now y'all, if you coach tricep push-ups in class, always give them the option to go down to the knees. Most, especially most women, most people in general, but most women don't have the upper body strength to do tricep push-ups on their toes without the back going all willy-nilly. So starting to look like a worm. Check it out. From the side, a properly done tricep push-up should look like this. Glutes tight, abs tight, elbows straight back like slots in a toaster. Lift one body, one unit. What you're gonna see from your people is this. Okay? They let the hips kind of drop down and then they're slow to bring it back up. It needs to be one body going down and coming up. And since we're always giving your people the option to drop down to the knees, don't feel like you, just because you're the instructor, need to do them on your toes. Like I said, most women do not have the tricep strength to do repeat tricep push-ups with proper form, and that does include you, group fitness instructors. So don't force it, all right? You can always maybe start demonstrating one or two on the toes and then drop down to the knees, okay? Especially because we are just on stable strength, we still got compound and dynamic to go. So don't completely waste your triceps and your core strength all on the first exercise. But we'll say we did a minute to a minute and a half tricep push-ups on the knees or on the toes. Then maybe your uh, progression to your compound movement could be that tricep push-up into a tricep kickback. So here and boom, kick back. Then for all out dynamic strength, you would drop down to a hover, hold it there, and then with the legs, peg leg kicks. Woo! Try not to bust your face on the floor. Peg leg kicks, 30 seconds to one minute. OMGs, that second set's gonna be tough. No shame in that game if you need to do stable strength exercise of tricep push-ups round number two on those knees. So there's the first option of a stable compound dynamic for your tricep track. Okay? There's so much more we can do with it. Let's get your bench out. We haven't done just a ton with the bench in these examples. And, you know, we got a ton of benches here in the studio so that we will use them. Use your benches. Here we go. One option for stable strength could be to take one dumbbell, lay back, do tricep skull crushers. Again, single joint exercise here, just flexing at the elbows, extending at the elbows, no movement at all at the shoulders. This is called a tricep skull crusher for your stable strength exercise. And then for your compound movement, maybe come up to seated, French press with a lift. So French press, stand up. French press, stand up. Here, you can bet your bottom dollar the heart rate is gonna come much higher here than it was when they were just doing their French presses. Sorry, when they were just doing their skull crushers. Then for all out dynamic strength, maybe you lose the dumbbell, have them take the hands to the end of the bench like this, do one tricep dip and drive. Tricep dip and drive. Elbows go straight back and Vertical leap or no, you can take out the leap and still get their heart rate up to that anaerobic level just by transitioning from the floor to standing. 30 seconds to a minute, move on, do it again. Okay, let's kind of continue in that vein. I do like dips. A lot of people find them hard on their wrists. If they're hard on your wrists, don't do them. If it's bad for the backs of your shoulders, if you're worried about shoulder impingement, don't do them. There are tons of other tricep exercises, but for those of you with healthy shoulders and healthy wrists, is a tricep dip a option as a way to tone the tries? Yeah, yeah, it totally is. So I'm gonna show you an option for stable strength working dips. The further you take the legs out, the harder your dip will be. And you wanna coach that to your people in class. So the closer the heels are in, the easier their dip will be. So maybe start just single leg tricep dips. Could you do both legs down? Of course, but I'm giving you some creativity here, folks. So this is your stable strength exercise. And then for compound movement, maybe add a little river dance, alternating kicks with those tricep dips 
then all out dynamic strength, I would go right back to where I was when I just showed you on the skinny end of the bench to a tricep dip and to a vertical leap. Fun times. Then you're ready to go. Other leg, tricep dip, stable strength, compound. Notice I am doing dips as I'm doing this river dance move, kicking the legs out. On in two, all out, baby. All out dynamic strength. Okay, let's move along. Other tricep exercises. Let's try with both dumbbells. Another option for tricep series could be using both dumbbells and starting with a tricep kickback as your stable strength exercise. Now it's important with your tricep kickbacks that you are flexed forward at your hips. If you're standing upright, you're not using gravity to your training advantage. With triceps work, it really helps to use gravity against you. You do wanna notice here, again, it's a stable strength exercise and it's a single joint exercise. So you're only flexing and extending at the elbows. The shoulders are not moving at all. So you notice the shoulders set that humerus above the torso and it stays there. So the top part of your arm does not move at all. Stay steady for those tricep kickbacks as your stable strength exercise. Again, coach the back here. You know you're gonna have people that backs are all kinds of wonky, all kinds of crooked, all kinds of rounded. So you wanna coach them to maintain a super flat back. It is not vertical, but it is flat. So that is your tricep kickback. Maybe add on a French press, also known as an overhead tricep extension for your compound movement. If you wanted to make it even more compound, maybe add a single leg balance as you come up into that French press or overhead tricep extension, if that's how you want to call it. You could even go into more of a deadlift as you do the uh, kickback and then lift that knee as you come here into the overhead tricep extension. So really hoisting your hips back like a slingshot as you do the tricep kickback and then rising up tall into that overhead tricep extension. Tons of compound movement going on here, folks. So heart rate should be much higher than it was when you were just doing tricep kickbacks alone. Now for all out dynamic strength, here's your option to do a tricep burpee. So you would do a tricep push up, rise up, jump or not. Because you've got this extra load in your hands, you really don't have to jump. You can work on rhythm to get that really awesome anaerobic response even without jumping with it. So your people can jump if they want to jump. If they don't want to jump, work on a quick turnover from the tricep push-up up to standing with no jump at all. 30 seconds to one minute. You do two sets. And then that wraps all of the blocks that require the stable compound dynamic. We do have block seven left, and that's core, but you don't have to follow stable compound dynamic for your core block. I'm gonna show you options both ways. So let's move on to that. Okay, our final chart before the stretch is core. For core, you don't have to follow stable compound dynamic, but I'm gonna give you options if you wanted to. And Fabiola, I'm gonna light up your world because I know you love the gliding discs. And this first series of exercises uses your gliding discs. Begin in high plank. With high plank, a couple things you wanna coach, shoulder in line with the hip, in line with the ankle. I know it seems pretty common. You think everybody knows how to plank? No, they don't know how to plank well. You'll see a lot of people dropping the hips down or hoisting them up. We gotta get that plank right before adding on. And our stable strength exercise does add on to this. It is a tuck, thinking the knees in and then out. So you draw the knees in towards your abdomen and then back out to high plank. A couple things you need to coach for here is keeping the shoulder right over the wrist because you'll see some movement going on with people there. Another thing is not letting your belly fall or your hips rise. In other words, you're going to see some people as they come in, they are starting in this position and then coming in and coming back here, the lazy man's way, no good, I'm going to be here. Or you might see this, taking the butt up towards the ceiling, which makes it kind of a tuck, kind of a pike and it's not a very good version of either one. So what you wanna be sure that they're doing is keeping this in line with this, in line with that, as they then touch in, out, in, out, okay? So if you're following our series, a minute to a minute 30, right here with tucks. Next, for compound movement, we'll do lateral sweep into your tucks. Lateral sweep around, into tuck. Don't you think it's interesting that tuck rhymes with tuck? Woo! Because it sucks a lot. Lateral sweep and tuck. Lateral sweep. Tuck. 
a minute to a minute and a half, and maybe your all out dynamic strength, mountain fire. Fire it up, quick turnover, quick, 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 quick. 30 seconds to one minute. Ooh, that's a tough core series. You may need to take the time down to the lower end so their shoulders and their core aren't just completely fried after the first set and still got juice for the second set. Okay, so in this core series, you don't have to follow that progressive flow. It doesn't have to be stable, compound, dynamic, as I just gave you an option of how it would be. The reason we give you either or here is because you have to feel your audience. If you have a bunch of amateur athletes, like bring it on, they can take everything, then yeah, it may be even in block number seven, you, you deliver them a stable compound all out dynamic strength. Like they have it in them to go anaerobic again. But a lot of our weekend warriors, your average day folks, they finish that block number six. They feel like they have gone up there to the highest heavens for the last time. Don't make them do it again. And so it's very empowering to know I finished it. Now I'm just gonna do some core strength. Not gonna have to take the heart rate up again. So you don't want to discourage them by making them follow that progressive series again when their body just really needs to bring it down. So here's your options if you were to just do all the same level of core strength exercises, right? So no going all out, anything crazy like that. Um, I will say though, do not mislabel it a stable compound all out unless you truly do take them anaerobic because it's just an insult to the whole rest of the class if you sort of half-ass your core and call it that when it's a misnomer. So for instance, if you had them doing crunches on into crisscross, yeah, that is going stable into compound and then maybe you do a V-up. Sorry, V up is not getting the heart rate response to make it considered a all out dynamic strength exercise. So it is not following that flow. Could you do crunches, crisscrosses, V ups? Yeah, but don't call it a progression when it is really not following the VTC progression. Capiche? So if you wanted to just do regular old strength exercises for the core with no progression, maybe you do basic crunches from here, possibly take a knee in and out, in and out, maybe add rotation, go as long as you'd like, do the other side, in and out, in, out, add rotation, then maybe both legs, crunch and hover, crunch and hover, obviously you'd go much longer than this, then you could go into your crisscross series, side to side, hello obliques, Mm-hmm, mm -hmm, good. Next, you could take your legs out to hover, hollow rock, bring it on in and out, okay? Into accordion crunch and out. Let's go four more, I love these. Four, three, and two, and how about V-ups? Sure, maybe alternate legs with V-ups so that then you can work them into both legs. Some people, it's not gonna be available to them, so they'll know, hey, it's cool, I already learned it with one leg, and keep doing it with one leg. If I need to bend my knees, great. Then maybe work your way into both legs with the VFs. Up. I'm just gonna go two more, V up. This would be a good time to go into a plank series, so you could flip it over. Anything you wanna do with planks, maybe alternating shoulder taps. Remember, if you're coaching anything like this, you are also making sure they are not shifting the hips drastically. Drives me bananas. Even fitness professionals tend to do things where you lift a hand and they start shifting the hips all around like this. No good. This should be almost completely stable at the hips, okay? So maybe alternating shoulder taps, maybe alternating hip taps, maybe alternating knee, or even more challenging would be to tap all the way to the toes like this. Then potentially you go into a side plank series. Uh-huh. You could even then go into a overhead series, arching that body. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good core work here. You're probably not gonna have just a ton of time, so I'm showing you more options than you would use in one BTC class but good to have options. I'm gonna lift up into side plank, back to your regular high plank, side, steady regular high plank. You got the drill, 
From here, you would go to that overhead long reach, hoisting the hip up, back to side plank. Three, obviously you could do as many as you want. Two, you're running out of time now. Remember, this is only a 60 minute class. From here, whenever you are done with your core, you move them on to that nice finisher, the stretch. Your restorative finish and a nice deep stretch. Let's go there. If you finish your core exercises on the mat, you don't want to get them abruptly up to standing to stretch. So we might as well progress to either laying on the mat or to quadruped position to begin our stretching series. I'm going to bring you to quadruped. So to all fours, hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, round your back like an angry cat, then drop your belly and lift your neck and head. Raise your head high. Ah, uh, yes, do that again. Round your back like an angry cat. Maybe you even meow here. Drop your belly, lift your neck and head. Feels so good. And neutral spine. You'll step your right foot between the two hands. Take your left leg a little bit further back. Raise your torso and push some energy down here through that left hip. Okay? You're going to take your left hand, raise it up, and rotate. So turn away from you. Turn towards the leg that is stabilizing you in the front. You can even here open up the arms. Look towards your back hand. Good. Then windmill the arms around to the inside of that foot. Hold it here. Maybe you bend your elbows just slightly, whatever's available to you. Some of you are super duper flexible. Maybe you can get your forearms all the way down to the ground. Good for you. Super. We're going to turn your face towards the screen. You will lift up. Nice length and then weave through. So long side arm just stretches on through. You're gonna feel a stretch in your inner thigh, your adductor. Adductors get super duper tight, so it's nice to feel that good stretch right through here. Excellent. Help yourself to all fours and make your way into the other side. Okay, so drop that right hip down, energy down through this hip very, very nice. Downside arm lifts up. That's your right arm. Gently twist and open up those arms, maybe looking towards your back, which is your left hand. Very, very nice. You windmill the arms around the inside of that foot, bend the elbows slightly, or maybe bend them a lot if you're super duper flexible. Feel a stretch coming in right here in the inner thigh. It feels so, so, so great preparing you for that deeper stretch that comes next. So raise your torso, take that left leg out long, left arm reaches, 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 then twist it through. And that's where you're feeling, mm, 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 goodness, right here in the adductors in your left leg. Of course, you'd have super soothing music playing here right now, total change in vibe from our beast mode that we were in for the VTC class. We want them to have a very restorative finish and send them out on a high. That is your VTC format. You guys, practice, practice, practice. Plug your own moves in. I gave you a ton of exercises in our library, but it didn't even get 1%, not even 1% of exhausting all of the options you could have for stable, compound, and all out dynamic strength in those six or seven blocks. So have fun with it, and I can't wait to see, I cannot wait to see your test class. So send me that video when you have it. Okay, instructors, here's the bonus round. I know you think you finished the master class and the whole exercise library and tutorial, but who doesn't love a bonus round? I wanna teach a VTC class this time with no equipment. One, to show you that you really don't have to have all of these bells and whistles to still follow that format through all seven blocks, stable strength, compound movement, all out dynamic strength. You don't need anything but your body alone. And with the master class we did earlier, you may have been trying to make it work with home goods, but you're like, eh, my home goods are kind of a lousy substitute for the real deal. So like, don't try to do all of the compound stuff on a on an ottoman that's maybe not as stable as a bench, or perhaps your, your jugs were not as easy to hold as dumbbells are. So I get it how that masterclass may have been great in theory, but if you're at home right now with, not, with no access to fitness equipment, the body weight only option may work for you much better. So let's get started with a body weight only masterclass of this BTC format.
Here we go. Go ahead and begin with me with a little boxer shuffle. Right here, side to side, shuffling out, triple step, triple step. Ah, 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 ah. You will see this again later, a triple step. Working a little agility right off the bat. that body ready for the workout to follow. Three, two, and let's skate it out. Skate, skaters. Use your arm, drive. We need that back leg through. Eight, seven. Six, four. Already starting to breathe a little heavy. We're just warming it up. Lateral lunge. Good. You know, you don't have to tap all the way down. Maybe just right here. Maybe so, maybe no. Four. Three. Good job. Let's warm up those lats. Reach it up and over. Uh huh. Four. You dig in a little shoulder stretch? Let's do that. Let's get the delt stretch, reaching straight across. Three, and two, and string curls. Kick your heel all the way up towards those butt tops, stretching the quadriceps out. Man, the squats get so tight in this class that follows. So we're going to stretch now and we'll stretch them out more at the end. Four, three, and two. A little jump rope with me. Jump a rope. Who needs a real jump rope? Could you trip all over? I like the imaginary one. <laughs> all right, the workout has not started yet. We're just warming up the tissue and preparing you for the workout to follow. Four, three, Two squat side to side. Here, brush it off. Okay. During this class, I'm going to encourage you to do sumo squats, turning your toes out to two o'clock and ten o'clock, letting your knees track the same direction as those toes. Opening the hips here as you dip down into a deep squat. When I say deep, ideally you drop your hips to knee height, if not a little bit lower. Just for the warm up, I think hip height. Equally knee height is good. Seven. Six. Five. Keep your spine saluted. Lift through that spine. Three. Two more. Lateral lunge side to side. Lateral lunge. Lateral lunge. Now as you get warm, I think that body's getting ready to go up the mountain in intensity. Yeah, baby. In two, you know where I'm going. Double time, add impact. If high impact's no good for you, you can go double time without high impact. You can keep it low impact. That's your business. You modify when you need to. Eight and seven. Excellent. Just get started. Just get warmed up. Four. Take a deep breath, and exhale, let it go. Again, fresh air in, stale air out. One more. Hands to the thighs, sink down through a squat, round your back up. Drop your shoulders, lift your neck, raise your head. Friends, warm up is done. Lock one, start with stable strength, push up. Here we go. Lower and lift. Okay, so block one is your chest, shoulders, core track. I want you to tighten those glutes, tighten those abdominals. And if you find that form is difficult or impossible on the toes, you may need to drop to the knees. Yeah, if it's impossible, you for sure need to drop to the knees. If it's difficult, well yeah, it's difficult for all of us. 
but if it's difficult to the point where you cannot maintain a straight line, shoulder to hip, hip to heel, then you need to drop to the knee. Okay? Your heart rate right now is lower than it's going to be as we build up the pyramid. Just on stable strength here with push-ups. How about eight more? Eight more push-ups. Yeah. How about it? Your breath is an inhale as you lower. Exhale up. Beautiful. One more here, then we're going to add multi-joint, multi-muscle. Woo! Three. I like our build today because it's going to add some flexibility as well. Who doesn't need that, right? We all probably need to work on flexibility. Step your right foot forward. Outside of your right fingers, lift up, twist. In, back and push up. Now left foot. In. Reach up, twist. Back down and push up. Let's go a little faster. Reach and push up. Reach and push up. So step outside the right hand, reach up and push up. Heart rate should be higher than when we're doing repeat push ups. Up. In and push up. Good rotation there. Lift, open that chest. And then work it on push up. Four. In. Three. Let's go. Two more reps. One more here. Take your hands in. A little bit more narrow. Right foot's going to come forward. Lift up, leap, and back and left. Lift up, leap. Try that with me. Go for tempo, hit it. So step, up, and back. Taking your heart rate all the way to the top. Over 85% of heart rate max for the first time today. You're feeling your chest, shoulders, core as you step back to plank. Fire up the legs as you step in and leap. Woo, Tinker is talking. Come on, come on, come on. Need for speed. Let's pump it up for four more. It's working on power, strength, conditioning, mobility. Stability, I think that was four. Set it up, push up. You will recover as we work. If your heart rate's super duper high right now, hey, so is mine. It will recover as we work. Here in the stable strength block. The top of the block is stable strength. The middle of the block is compound movement. The top, the finish of the block is all out dynamic strength. Woo! And there's a method to this. You recover from that all out dynamic strength as we actively work in that stable strength exercise. Woo! What do you think? 12 more? 12 sounds good to me. Lower and lift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Disabled body, it's such a treat, it's such a joy to be able to move, to exercise. Woo! Feel free to drop to the knees as I have. You always want to champion form first. Let's go, four more. You feeling your chest, your shoulders? Mm -hmm. Core's quivering a little bit, as it should be, two more. Okay, by stable strength, step right foot in, twist, and back to push up. Good, now left, in and twist, back and push up. Yeah. Eight more, and push up, seven. It's pretty quick, turnover, six, 
Then take it back. Five. How you breathe in. Should be heavier than push-ups, but not all out. Three. We got one more each side. Let's take it to the top of the mountain. All out dynamic strength. Step in. Lift it up. Step back. Step outside the right pinky finger. Lift it up. Outside the left pinky finger. Up. Woo. So every block we do, we repeat twice. Blocks one through six. We will learn it first block from first round. Second round, you're an expert. Turn on the gas. Give me eight more. Seven. Woo. I'm with you. Last four. Time. Lot two. Squat series. Sumo. Prisoner squat. Alright, ladies and gents, toes turned out, knees turned out, two and ten. Salute your spine. Stable strength here. You may still be breathing heavy from our dynamic strength in block one. You will recover here as we work here in stable strength. Woo! Very nice. Isn't it cool? Isn't it cool how without you even doing anything to make it happen, your heart rate comes down as you just lower the intensity. You don't have to stop altogether to get that heart rate to lower. It's gonna happen just by easing up the workload. Woo! Eight more. Eight. In seven, you should be ready to add on compound movement. Your heart rate will be low enough to move on. One sumo squat, one lunge. Sumo squat, one lunge. Sumo squat, into a lunge. Boom. Very nice. We added compound movement, adding prisoner squat into a lunge forward. Are you already thinking, I think I have an idea how she's going to progress this to dynamic strength? You probably have a good idea what's coming. So, you're going right leg only doing the movement. Right leg steps into the lunge. Right leg steps back to squat. Then right leg to your lunge. Huh? Eight more. Eight. If you're thinking, what about the other side? Don't worry, we've got two sets. We'll focus on the other side, set two. All righty, four to go. It's a prisoner style sumo squat because the hands are behind the head. Make it a prisoner style. One more like this. High impact, check it out. Here, here. Jump and switch it. You don't need to be on the beat of any music. You go with your own rhythm.
is recovering as your body moves. It can move slow, but don't make it a complete passive recovery where you just sit down and drink your water for a while. Keep moving. At the tippy top of the sumo squat, squeeze your bun super tight. Crack a walnut in those buttock muscles. Crack. Just like that. So it's a prisoner style sumo squat because your hands are behind your head and elbows open wide. What makes it a sumo squat is the turnout here at your hips that trickles all the way down to the toes. Uh -huh. Good. This is such an amazing metabolic training workout. Because we don't stop, folks. We don't stop. If you're wearing a heart rate monitor, you should notice throughout this class, you do a little build each block from stable strength to compound, and then it goes up to the highest of high mountains on dynamic strength. Seven. In six, are you ready to add compound movement? We're going to say yes. We're going to say yes. If you're a no, then keep doing your stable strength exercise. Everybody else, left leg. Sumo squat, lunge. Sumo squat, lunge. I know a lot of you really have to work when you lunge on avoiding turning your knees in. Friends, it's a congenital issue for me too. I really have to focus on that, otherwise the knee wants to turn in. We've got to work. I'm trying to keep it in line with the toes. Woo. Oh yeah. In your head right now, you're preparing for that all-out dynamic strength. Your body's really good at doing what your mind tells it it's gonna do. Eight. Seven. Uh-huh. Four to go. Last two. Get happy. Get ready. We're going to push your limits. You must squat and lunge for biometric style. No beat. Your own rhythm. Sumo style prisoner squat into a power lunge. Seven. Six. Man, those muscles below the belt are fired up. Four. Three. Ha ha. Backtrack. Lay it down on your belly. Superman, y'all. Lay it out. We'll recover as we work. Lift one arm opposite leg. Lower, other side. Lower. So we hyperextend the low back and lower. Strengthening your posture muscles and your lower back. Up and lower. For a lot of people, it's too much. Too much on the low back to lift both arms and both legs at the same time. So maybe you go, like I am, opposite arm, opposite leg. Okay? All right. Lift. This is your stable strength exercise for back. You are getting a little bonus of glute and hamstring here with the Superman. Up. Lower. Lift. And lower. Lift it up, lift it up. You go maybe a little higher. Maybe so, maybe no. Give it a try. Let's go eight more. Eight. During the stable strength exercise, heart rate should come down from that all that dynamic strength in block two. Four more just like this. Oop. Lower. Three. Backtrack with body weight alone. Two more stable strength. Okay, compound movement. You're going to lift your arms only in one flat push-up. Back. Okay, try that. 
Lift the arms in, up, flat push up. And Superman, flat push up. So we're adding chest, shoulders, core with your back track. Yeah, we're the little antagonist there. Love it. Reach. Again, it's probably too much for a lot of people to lift both arms and both legs. Maybe you can lift both arms. Is that still a problem? You could go back to opposite arm, opposite leg. How about four more? Three. All right, all that dynamic strength. Opposite arm, opposite leg, in, clap overhead. Opposite arm, opposite leg, in, clap overhead. Try to remember which side you worked the time previous, which arm, which leg. Opposite arm, opposite leg, and clap overhead as you jump. If the jump is too much, you will still get the heart rate up without jumping. Let's do three more. Hey, back to stable strength. Superman. We did slower tempo on the other side as we were learning. If it's too fast for you here, you can slow it back down. This. Uh huh. This. But if you're okay with a faster tempo, go for it. Most of us can really stand to do more work to strengthen the low back. We focus on tons and tons of ab work and don't do enough to counter that with low back strength. Eight more at tempo, or if you're going slow, you got four more. Four more, or two if you're going super slow. All right, one on each side. Both arms into a flat push up. Reach. Flat push up. Oh. Uh -huh. Eight. Seven. Anybody else slipping? You're slipping all over this floor. Maybe you're better on carpet. Maybe you're in the living room carpet and maybe four.
table strength here. Lunge back. I gotta tell you, back in the day, I was a baton twirler, and I loved it, but I always really wanted to be a cheerleader. Our combat movement with lunges is going to reach those of you who are maybe either former cheerleaders or want to be cheerleaders. Yeah, good. Deep lunge, you don't have to touch your knee all the way down, but you can. Stable strength here. Alternating. You can hardly wait, right? You're like, where is the cheerleader ring you're telling me about? It's scissors with arms. Scissors looks like this. Out, up, out, up. Just scissor those legs. Front and back, arms out and up. So this isn't just for me to be nostalgic about one of you cheerleader days. It's working cardio, working lower body, and working deltoids. Uh-huh. All of that in this compound movement. You're not going all out dynamic strength yet. This is still compound movement. So your heart rate has progressed from lunge back, but you haven't completely emptied the tank. Right? Right. Four. Three. All I want you to do for all that dynamic strength. Touch down to the ground, scissor, land. Scissor, if you have it in you, reach the arms up as you scissor. Let's go. All that dynamic strength. Don't overthink it. The right leg that lands back, it comes forward in the scissor and the right leg lands back again. I'll hit the other side on round number two.
Shake it out. Curl. Stable strength for biceps. I know. Some of y'all are thinking, how do you work biceps without weights? It's called mental imagery. I want you to focus your mind's eye on that massive dumbbell, imaginary dumbbell you have in your hand. Okay? Pretend it's there even though it's not. And focus on flexing the bicep brachii as you curl, curl. Feel it? Boom! Gun show. If you need to, you can even walk around a little bit as you're doing your bicep curls. One up, one down. That may help you to get the heart rate down from dynamic strength you just hit with the lunge series. Uh-huh. If you let your mind drift, you're gonna find you quit flexing through those vibes. You gotta stay super sharp focused on curl. Flex those muscles. Yeah. When you have an actual dumbbell in your hand, the weight does that work for you. It triggers that brain response. But when it's an imaginary dumbbell, you gotta, gotta, gotta stay focused. Check it out. Step together, step. It's that triple step we learned in our warm up. And I'm just doing a shimmy with the arms into a curl. It's the opposite arm that curls up. The opposite of the knee that lifts. If it's too much for you to think about, take out the shimmy and just curl side to side. Push-ups for our stable strength. On your knees or on your toes, 
Let's drop the chest down with elbows staying tight in. Elbows stay tight into the rib cage like railroad tracks. All right, those railroad tracks slide right past your rib cage as you drop your chest down. If you are on your toes, baller, way to go. But just be sure you're lifting one body, one unit, and you're not snaking that body up. What that means is you're not letting your hips drop as you raise your upper body. It lifts one unit all together. All right. Stable strength is these tricep push-ups. Compound movement is going to be your tricep push-up into a contralateral reach, which is a bunch of jargon for a bird dog, okay? You may not know what a contralateral reach is, but you might know a bird dog. One tricep push-up, slide it in, bird dog. Tricep push-up, slide it in, bird dog. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Boom. Nice. As we go with that bird dog, you're strengthening the back side of the body, the posterior chain, the back of the shoulders, the lower back, the glutes, the hammies. Man, dynamic strength is a tough one for triceps today. Let's get through four more of these compound movements. And then I'll surprise you with what's, in my opinion, one of the hardest exercises of the day. Woo! Get excited for that. One more. Hold a hover in low tricep push-up. Right here. Peg leg. Don't face plant. Eight, seven, six, four, three, two. Okay. Woo! Holy cannoli. Ideal meal. Let's do all that again. Tricep push up. Down, down, up, up. Uh huh. Good. Railroad tracks. Yeah. This is your stable strength. Uh huh. Stable strength is tough. Compound movement is tougher. All out dynamic strength is the toughest. Woo! Give me four more tricep push ups. Lower. Lift. Three. Ladies and gents, tricep push up to your bird dog. Contralateral reach. If it's too much, leave out the tricep push up and just do a bird dog. Leave out the tricep push up and just do your contralateral reach. Okay, your option. You know what's coming, right? Seven, maybe you're saving a little something for that. And if that is too much for you, those peg legs, do a tricep push-up into a burpee. That's another option. Four more. Oh, yeah. Three, do know it will be your last time to go all out today. Let that inspire you. Folks, down to hover. Down to hover. Bring it down. Let it simmer, simmer, simmer. And peg leg. Let's go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, done. Woo! Flip it over. Core time. Seventh block is core and it's all endurance. No more compound all out business. No more getting the heart rate up. You're just gonna work some core. If you don't have time to stay for core, well guess what? You worked your core muscles and everything else we did today. You're good, you're good. Up. Just a basic crunch. Lifting your chest and trying to get your upper ribs, sorry, your lower ribs, closer to your hip bones. 
as you crunch it up. Up. Think of making those two points closer together. Squeeze it in. Up. Elbows open wide. Hands are open behind the head. Eight more crunches. Eight. Man, you guys rock and roll today. You killed that workout. You annihilated it. In two, triple pulse at the top. Three, two, and do it again. Three, two, triple pulse, and down. Just as a reminder, with the different blocks. Block one was chest, shoulders, core. Block two was focused on squats. Block three, we focused on back work. Remember when we did those Superman? Block four, focused on biceps. Block five, oh no, 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 no. Block four, focused on lunges. We added our cheerleaders in the mix. Block five, focused on biceps. Block six was triceps. Block seven is here your endurance core. Rotate side to side, rotate, rotate. So with our BTC classes, we'll have on the schedule at the Village Dallas, every class will follow this format. The moves will be different in every class you take, but there will be those six blocks to start with a stable strength exercise, built compound movement, then all out to the tippy top of the mountain, dynamic strength. Sometimes we'll even follow that flow in the core series. Today we're working endurance for core. Eight more like this. Seven more oblique crunches. You should be feeling the goodness here in the side abs, those obliques. Four. How about we add leg movement? Crisscross, twist, twist. If that's too much on your hips or low back, couple options. You can angle higher to the ceiling, or you can take the legs back out altogether and revert back to our exercises we were doing with just torso rotation with feet planted. Those are oblique crunches. Six. And four. Three. Two. Come all the way up to see them. Place your hands behind your buttocks. Bring your knees in towards your chest. The tighter you make your ball, the harder this will be. We're going to keep it in tight, and we go all the way out to where your body's hovering above the ground. Try that with me. In, out, in. It's very, very difficult, but if you wanted to make it more so, you release the hands. In, out. Fantastic. Eight more. Eight. Stronger with each rep. Seven. Don't forget about your water. I haven't given you water breaks during class, but I want you guys drinking water. So if you haven't been taking pause breaks, then be sure you're drinking after the workout. Four more. Four. You know those muscles are mostly water. How are you going to get more definition without drinking your water? Drink your water, people. I believe we have one more. We do what we don't. We do. Bring the knees in. Roll over onto one side. Your body weight is on that butt cheek, not on your hip bone or in the middle of your behind, but right on the side of the butt cheek. Other hands behind your head. Bring those knees in. Ideally, elbow touch the side of the knee. In and out. Let's go for 16. 15. Woo! Oblique accordion crunches. Give me eight more reps. Four. And flip a rosy. Flip it onto the other side. Sit on the side of that booty cheek. Get nice and comfy there. Find your soft spot. Hand behind the head. Elbow in to touch the side of the knee. Let's go. In and out. 15. 14. Done with core. 
lay back. Oh, mama's gonna make it all okay. I'm gonna make it all all right, right here. Long through those limbs. Reaching your fingertips to one end, your toes to the other end. I'm gonna change our power music on the soundtrack to get you nice and soothing music on the soundtrack. Cause that's how much mama loves you. Power Chilled 8 is on our soundtrack. Thank you, Power Music, for the royalty-free jams for this track. Long through that body. Fingers reach to one end. Toes reach to the other end. Nice deep breaths. Bring your, well, bring one knee, doesn't matter which knee, in towards your chest. Wrap your fingertips around that knee and draw it in tight. So you've interlocked your fingers. Wrap around the knee and bring it in. You're feeling a good stretch here in your glute, and that was a very glute intensive workout. Take that same side arm out to the side like an iron cross, and then gently pull your knee down to the opposite side of the room. Don't force it all the way down to the ground. Do try to keep the shoulder down on the floor, okay? We're not forcing a crack in the back, okay? That's not the goal here. You just want gentle rotation. Hold it there. And the longer you stay in this nice gentle twist, the more you'll probably be able to rotate with it. Your body's gonna give. Cross this ankle over the opposite thigh. Interlock your fingers behind the hamstrings. Gently pull up. And now, if you will, take your elbow and press gently into your inner thigh for a little bit more release in that piriformis. Release the top leg, other knee comes in. Interlock your fingers, gently draw the knee in towards your chest. What we really want to get away from is forcing your body into deep stretches. Just embrace your flexibility where it's at right now. And like I said, we get better at the things we work on. So if you say, I'm just not flexible. Well, how often are you stretching? How often are you foam rolling? Work on it. Same side arm as the knee in, comes out to the side like an iron cross, palm facing down. Opposite hand wraps around the knee. Gently draw the leg down to the opposite side of the room. Don't force it all the way down to the ground. If it makes, makes it down, okay, but that's not the goal. Hold. Maybe close your eyes. Maybe draw your breath deeply in through the nostrils and either out through the nostrils or out through the mouth. During the exhale is where you maybe apply a little bit more pressure and go into a little deeper twist. Cross the ankle over the opposite thigh. Interlock your fingers behind the hamstrings. Gently pull up and apply a little bit of pressure with this elbow into the inner thigh of that opposite leg. So if it's your right leg that's crossed over, your right elbow is gently pressing into the inner thigh of that right leg.
switch sides, please. Wrap it around and look behind your right shoulder. You'll probably notice you're a little tighter on one side than the other. Most of us are. the ground as you reach your fingertips out away from you. And extend the knees. Spread your legs about hips width apart. Hold opposite elbows and gently sway side to side. Let your head fall like dead weight. So then I stretch in the hamstrings. No strain at all in the neck. one dive all the way to the top. Take your time coming up. Exhale, release. One shoulder roll. Okay, you guys, no more sneaky business. That was your bonus round, and that is all the material that I'm throwing at you in the CEC workshop. Now, I really can't wait to get your test video. I want to see your interpretation of what the stable strength compound movement all-out dynamic strength flow would look like. I don't need the entire class done, but pick a block. Block one through six and do a test video to, to show me how you would present that block. Can't wait to see it. I will get your CECs to you once we have gotten your test video and you and I can jump on a Zoom call or a Google Hangouts call and go through the material. And I hope to have many of you on board as new rockin' VTC instructors to launch this amazing new Village Fit facility we have opening super soon.